Hello, my sweet shabby loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Every week I share kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Now today we have got so many fun projects here. You can see there is just stuff all over this table and I cannot wait to show you what we're going to be doing today. First off, we will be using some images. Now these are vintage angel and vintage pink Christmas images that I purchased from a gal off of Etsy and I will link her shop for you below. And then I have various images that I downloaded for free from Graphics Fairy. And those images are gonna come in handy to make three different types of ornaments. First of all, we will be using some of those vintage images and some tart tins to be making these adorable little Christmas ornaments here. So you're going to need all kinds of stuff. You're gonna need ribbon, you're gonna need lace, pearls, beads, all kinds of just beautiful things here that we're going to use to embellish our cute little tart tins. We are also going to be using several different types of glue. I'll be using Mod Podge, Quick Grip, and also just your standard hot glue gun to apply these images. Now I did print some of these on paper and I did find that it is better to print them on cardstock. So the next ornament that we'll be making are these beautiful little medallions. And look at that pretty little cherub there. We're also going to be using lots and lots of glitter today. So for these little beautiful things, you will need either various scrapbooking papers or you can even use book pages as well. And you'll need a hole punch and some ribbon to finish that off. Then we will be using some jumbo craft sticks when we do our little lace dolls. And if that weren't enough, the last thing that we will be doing is taking some of this Avery iron-on and I have already printed off this glorious angel here. We are going to be ironing this angel onto a stocking which we will create and then embellishing that with some beautiful laces and also some florals that I have picked up from Hobby Lobby. So we've got a busy one ahead of us today, girls. So I'm gonna clear this up and we're gonna go ahead and get these projects started. I don't know about you, but just the thought of using pom-poms and glitter makes me feel like a little kid all over again. You can't help but smile when you look at those cute little vintage faces and the pearls and the pom-poms and the lace and all of that girly, girly goodness. I'm gonna start by putting some glitter on some of these little angel's wings here. Go along the angel wings and sprinkle that glitter. We're gonna tap off the excess and that's just so cute. And then I always go back and put my glitter back into the container. I decided that I wanted to open them up just a little bit more. I got these off of Amazon and I will put the link for them below if you decide that you do want to do some of these cute little tart tin ornaments. There is a ridge on the inside and that's where I'm going to place my hot glue and lay my image on that. Try some white pom-pom. Yep, that's gonna be adorable. That's gonna be the end and put in some extra glue right there. I think that's cute. We'll do another row of pom-poms. See if I want to put that there. I'll show y'all how I made this in just a second. Load up the back with some glue, center that on there, and hold until it sets. I like that. Figure out where the exact middle is. I'm going to put a button on the back of that just to give it some more stability. I think that finishes it off anyway. Doesn't that look so pretty? She is adorable. I am only going to show two more. 
because it's pretty much the same thing of picking your image and deciding on all of the little tchotchkes that you want to go on there. We're going to put glue inside our tart tin. I think I want to do that around the edges there. And this is when a fine tipped hot glue gun really comes in handy. I think I want to use this lace. So I've cut my lace 20 inches because that gives me about three times the diameter so I know when I put my string in here and I pull it to gather it, that's going to give me plenty of gathers around the outside edges. I take a large darning needle and I take some nice polyester thread. So I'm just going to do a running stitch and what you do, you pull your needle down and up down and up and you do that the entire length about a quarter inch apart when I pull that tightly you can see I'm going to be able to gather up that lace then I'm just going to turn this over and do a test fit and that's going to be really pretty tie this off that looks a little plain to me yeah I think I'm going to like that this thing is on a row of three I'm just going to cut one of the rows off and glue that onto my little tart tin. Yep, I'm going to like that much better. She looked a little plain. Much better. I'm going to put a little glue on the end of that. Set that in there to see how I like it. And I do put a generous amount of glue and then we're just going to hold that until it sets. And it does take a little bit of extra time when you've got synthetic fibers like this. Now what do we want to use as a hanger for that? Oh yes, I think pom-pom trim it is. These are just so much fun. We got one more little cutie and then we will move on to our next project. A little sparkly pipe cleaner. Yep, I like that. I think that little lace right there is really cute. So I'll be gluing that on too. So we're going to need a 20 inch piece of ribbon. And I'm just going to continue going down and up. And that's why it's nice to have that long needle like that. Because it makes it easier to do that stitch. Now that we have our stitch completed, pull on that thread. And just play around with it until I get the look I want. Tie off my end here. I'm going to roll that up and glue this down because I don't like that unfinished edge showing. Bondo spreader. It truly says Bondo on there. They make an appearance in just about every single one of my videos. Seal those edges together. That is just so pretty. Yep, I think the lace. It's not going to stick to this ribbon, so I've got to glue it directly to the tart tin on the back itself. And there she is. Since I have some of these already cut and glued, we'll go ahead and do our little cherubs first. Now because of the size of my little cherubs, most of my paper I have cut at either 5 inches wide and 10 inches long or 6 inches wide and 10 inches long depending on the little figure that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue her down on that because I think that is just a stunning combination. So quick and easy for the hanger. Find the middle here. This gold is going to be pretty. Tie a knot on the end of that. Thread that through from the back. Bring this up. Pull that down. And she is finished. So to do this, you can use either inking shears if you want a decorative edge like I have on these here. And also these little Fiskars paper edgers. And you're going to do the long edge of your paper. And now you just fold it accordion style. Just a cute little 
sheet music looking paper here. Just give that a good press. You want to make sure you end with pieces going down. So we're going to fold it in half this way. We're just going to match up those edges. So now we can go ahead and run some glue and then just squeeze tightly and put a little bit of glue. Squeeze that together till it sets and press it together. I like to use these smaller scissors. These are Fiskars and I just picked these up at Walmart because the smaller scissors make it so much easier to cut smaller images than using a big pair like this. And this is called Fussy Cut. Put some glitter on this little baby here using our Mod Podge and I only want it on the wings. Isn't that pretty? Glue in the center here. I'm going to put a little glue right here. Again, we're just going to tie our little knot here. Thread this through. Put that through our loop. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Man, I love that glitter. I think this beauty right here is going to look great on that color. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. Of course, she's going to need some glitter. Lovely. Isn't that pretty? I love these. I have just used one piece of accordion paper. If you want a fuller looking medallion for your cherubs, you can actually use two pieces. But instead of bringing this back around, we are going to glue these two pieces together here. I'm going to bring this around and glue this together and then we'll glue the inside together as well. There we go. And so you can see how full using two pieces is as compared to one. Now all I need to do is punch my hole and put in my ribbon and we are good to go. Loving all of that glitter on there. And now it is on to these little cuties right here. Is that not the cutest little thing you've ever seen? So we're going to get this going. So now we have little miss all cut out here. I'm going to be taking some pink tulle. I'm going to be putting the pink tulle on her little tutu to make sure that I have good coverage of the skirt as I'm going to measure it. So six times the width of her little skirt. So we are going to fold our tool in half and again we're going to do a running stitch. I'm going to adjust the gathers. I'm going to tie that off and figure out how I want her little skirt to lie. Put a little bit of glue right in here and then hold that till it sets. She's looking adorable already. I googled fairy wings, so I think these little fairy wings and that little tiara is going to be adorable. So I have her little teeny tiny tiara and I'll put that on there and I'm going to glue on her little fairy wings. I think I want some glitter on those wings too. Pom poms here and our little beads right there just to finish all that off. I tied a little bow because I think that looks really cute on her little dress right there. And I did get all those little rhinestones on there just to follow these little outlines here. Oh yes, that's really pretty. Yeah, that Mod Podge is not quite dry, but she's going to be adorable. I think that's going to be glorious. So we have her cut out and we're going to make her a skirt and this is seven and a half by five and yours is going to depend on what size you make your image. To shore up the back we're going to be using half of one of these jumbo craft sticks just like we've done in all of the other things. We're going to take our needle going to go in and out, up and down to do a running stitch across here to gather that fabric into a skirt. There we go. Just going to fold those edges back just like that. When we put our skirt on our little ballerina, we attached her skirt to the front. But with this, we're going to be attaching that skirt to the back just like that. 
And we're just going to put a generous amount of glue there. So I think this beautiful ivory colored lace is going to match the little ivory ruffle there in her top. I'm just going to start at one end and glue it down onto the other side. I'm going to use some quick grip. Put a little bit on the edge of the lace there. And now I'm going to go back in with my pinking shears so that will stop fraying. And I think I like that ribbon on top of that lace to cover that raw edge there. I cut this scallop part off here and I'm going to glue that down to the little ruffles on her sleeve. So I'll use the quick grip. Take that teeny tiny little piece of lace and lay it over the top. Just like that. That is so super cute. And that's why I like the quick grip when I'm using lace like that because the hot glue would just make a mess of it. So I want to add some blue glitter. And then I want to come back in where I see this gold in the wreath in her hair and add some gold glitter on there as well. Look at that. So our craft stick is going to give this some body so this doesn't just hang limply. And it also is going to give us a good place to glue the hanger on as well. So I want to bring it up as high as I can without it showing from around the image. Put some glue in here. Then come back and put a little bit up underneath the top there and hold that down as well. Ribbon or beads. I like the beads. I'm also going to put a button on top of that just to give that a little more stability. And there she is. Just beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoyed all of those little ornament tutorials. I cannot wait until I get the staged photos to show you just how awesome these little things are up close. Moving on to our stocking tutorial, obviously we're going to need a stocking. And you can print off stocking templates from so many different places. And I got this one from craftingfingers.co.uk and this came from Positively Splendid. So I'm going to be using this today, but I'm only going to be using the section without the cuff because we are going to be making an unlined, super simple, you're not going to believe how fast this stocking tutorial is. This is natural cotton canvas that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. So what I did is I took a piece that I knew was going to be large enough for my stocking template. And I snipped and ripped. I threw it in the wash and then of course tossed it in the dryer and gave it a good press. Hold it to where I know that my stocking is going to fit. And I will be doing an overhead to show you how I embellish it, but this is so big it just will not fit in the frame of an overhead shot. I'm not going to use all of that. I'm just going to use this right here. And this is going to be the top edge of our stocking. So we're not even going to be sewing a seam up there. There is no right side or wrong side. I'm just going to lay my pattern down, take a pin, and just trace around it. Cut it out and pin it together. We need to put in our stocking hanger. And I have cut a 13 inch piece of lace. So I'm placing the two wrong sides together so the right side is facing up. Then I am going to roll back the top of my stocking here. I'm going to take my lace with the scalloped edge down and I have pinned it kind of at an angle facing down. 
and I've left about a quarter inch of that extending past the edge of my stocking. Roll this back over the top and I'm going to pin this together. So now that our stocking is all pinned together, I am headed to the sewing machine. I'm going to put my presser foot against the edge here and just stitch all the way around. We are now going to do some clipping before we turn this right side out. So I take my scissors and I make little snips all around these curved edges and into this section of the foot right here because when we open that out it makes it lie flat and make your little snips careful not to cut into your stitching line and i cut them about a half inch apart all around this area here but on this section of the foot I actually cut those about a quarter inch apart just to make sure that that is going to turn and lie flat. Trim off the excess here of my lace. And now we're gonna turn this thing right side out. And we will be giving this a good press here in just a second, but I take my fingers and just really go along that seam. And that is what we have so far with our shabby edges at the top and our beautiful little lace hanger. And now it is on to the decorating. So I'm going to be adjusting the camera angle and bringing you in closer so you can see how we're going to decorate our beautiful unlined stocking. We are almost ready to begin putting our image on there. I don't want to iron this on first because if I iron this on and I iron it on too high, then my lace is going to cover up the image. So the first thing that we're going to do is apply the lace that you want at the top. And I have cut my lace to extend about an inch on either side of my stocking because I am going to be wrapping that around, wrapping those ends, so it gives a finished edge there. I'm also going to start in the middle and glue from the middle to one side and the middle to the other just to make it a little easier. Your quick grip is an awesome glue. Hot glue just makes a mess with a delicate lace like this. So we're going to just come back here, just run a line, lay that down, and press. It doesn't take long for that glue to set up. Add another little bit of glue and lay this down. And we'll continue gluing. I am going to clip this lace right along here after I get that glued down so the hanger and this lace do not interfere with one another. I'm going to trim right along this ribbon here to release our hanger like that. Then I'm going to cut this at an angle so it doesn't just stop bluntly at the end right here. How pretty is that? I am going to cut all around this image here just as we did in our other Christmas ornament tutorials. That way we don't have any of this excess white ground showing when we iron her on. And I even went in and cut out around the arms and the wings as well. If I have smaller images that I want to iron on, I just tape this down to a piece of cardstock and send it back through the printer. I have my iron set on the highest setting and I have preheated it for five minutes, no steam, and now we are going to go ahead and line up our image. The good thing about these, on the back there's actually a grid so you know if your image is upright or not. I'm going to set a timer for three minutes. And we're going to start at the top and work our way down applying firm pressure and hold that down for just a few seconds at a time and then move on to a next area. I also come back with the tip of my iron on all of these little small areas here and also all around the edges. So I'll see you guys back in just a few minutes because you definitely don't need to see me do all of this. Move this over so it can cool so it's not lying here where all the heat is 
and then we are going to set it for another three minutes and we will let this cool and peel off the paper backing. So we want to lift up, but we want to go slowly so we don't lift up our image. Oh my goodness, and there she is. Isn't that stunning? I want to embellish my stocking just a little more because more is more when it comes to shabby chic. And I think I want another piece of lace at the toe here. So I'm just gonna start laying some things out and decide where I want them. So I have everything laid out how I like it. Now we are just gonna go ahead and put all of this down. I have these pretty little paper flowers. So I'm gonna snip off these flowers from the floral wire here. I'll be using just regular old hot glue. So that's that right there, beautiful. I will be using quick grip for the lace and then hot glue for the others. So I'm just gonna pull all of this out here. And I am gonna be pulling the centers out of these flowers to glue those in as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bead out of the middle of that one. And I'm gonna pull this out too before I glue this down. And there we have it. Look how beautiful that is. Now I cannot wait to get some beauty shots and show you how gorgeous all of our projects turned out. Hope you received lots of inspiration from today's projects and that you had some fun too. I so enjoyed making these ornaments and the stocking and I'm pretty sure you will enjoy these projects as well. Come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until then my sweet friends, be blessed. <music>